In this last video, I'm going to cover substitutions. Substitutions for differential equations are much like substitutions for integrals. And like with integrals, there were certain special types of integrals where a substitution worked. The classic example in Calculus 2 was trig substitution. The same is true for differential equations. There are certain setups for differential equations where a substitution is really convenient. And I want to cover two of those setups. These are certainly not the only ones, but these are two kinds of equations that do show up in applied problems, so they're nice to cover. The first is, unfortunately, called homogeneous equations. This has nothing to do with homogeneous as I used it in the previous video. The terms come from different sources, different pieces of mathematics, and different pieces of mathematics both use the same term, and now we're stuck with them, meaning two different things in the same piece of DEs. This is frustrating. I'm sorry, but these are the standard terms. So we're just stuck with this kind of mathematical naming nonsense. The type of equations we're talking about here are dy over dt is some function of the expression y over t. And as long as you can do that, the substitution v equals y over t, or equivalently y equals tv, will improve the equation. Now what I'm doing here is I'm taking the function y of t, which is what I'm looking for in this equation, and replacing it with function v of t, and I'm going to get a new differential equation for v, and hopefully that new differential equation will be easier than the previous, and then if I know what v is, I can go back to figuring out what y is by reversing the substitution. That's the idea. So this y equals tv, I can differentiate both sides. The left derivative is dy dt, the right is the derivative of a product. If I do that product rule, I get v plus t dv dt. And if I replace the original dy dt, with this v plus t dv dt, and f of y over t with f of v, and that's what the substitution is, I get this new differential equation, which is now a differential equation looking for some function v of t instead of originally looking for y of t. I solve for the derivative term, put it in standard form, and I get this, and this is a separable equation. So this substitution changes any homogeneous equation into a separable equation. Let me do an example. Here is dy over dt equals t over y. So the substitution I'm looking for is uh, y over t. So this t over y is the reciprocal of the substitution I'm looking for. So my function then on the right is going to be 1 over v. It's the, this expression is the reciprocal 1 over v of the substitution v. And then I go directly to my form. Again, I don't need to repeat those derivation steps. The form of this substitution is dv over dt equals f of v minus v over t. I replace f of v with 1 over v, that's what it is, and I go to common denominator to make this a bit nicer, and I get this equation. This is a separable equation, and here are the steps to solve it as a separable equation, which I'll go through relatively quickly. So I separate, put the v's on the left and the t's on the right, I integrate, I get a bunch of logarithms, the integral on the left I asked the computer to do. I take the exponential of both sides to get rid of the logarithms. On the right, the exponential cancels off with the logarithm. And in standard fashion, I'm going to get an e to the c term, which I'll just write as c. In the right, the 1 half can be taken in um, the negative 1 half. So I would have ln of 1 minus v squared to the negative 1 half, which will turn this into a square root in the denominator. The exponential will get rid of the logarithm. So I'm going to get this expression. Then I isolate and solve for v. And it turns out the v is going to be plus or minus square root of 1 minus c over t squared. So I did get a better differential equation that I could solve. And now I need to go back. Well, what was v? v is equal to y over t. So y is equal to v times t. That was the substitution. So at the end, I just take the v solution and multiply by t to get the y solution. And this one I can simplify a little bit by taking the t inside the square root. In the end, y is plus or minus square root of t minus c squared. The substitution has turned it into a separable equation, which I can solve. Here is another example. This example is good to show you that these substitutions don't always appear obvious from the start. This doesn't look like the left, the right side should be a function of y over t. But if I split up the fraction and simplify it, I see that, well, this is negative y squared over t squared minus y over t. Well, this is negative v squared minus v. So sometimes it requires a bit of work to recognize that a certain type of substitution actually can work. But once I have f of v, negative v squared over v, 
I can just apply the standard form for the substitution, dv over dt is f of v minus v over t. Then I get this expression. I'll simplify this a little bit by putting the negative v's together. This is the separable equation I want to solve. And here are the steps to solve this as a separable equation. This one's a bit tricky because I want to take this negative v squared minus 2v over to the left, which is going to put it in the denominator. And then I want to integrate this. Well, this is integrating a rational function. I actually need to do this with partial fractions, which is another technique that you may remember from calculus two. Now you don't necessarily need to do this. I said you can do things by computer and the computer will do the partial fractions for you. But in this case, I wanted to show you that this is still a partial fractions, remind you that that technique exists. So it splits up this way into partial fractions, splits up to these two integrals on the left and the right is one over t. So I get the integral one over t dt. I get a bunch of logarithms. I take the one halves into the numerators or uh, inside the logarithms to give me exponents. I apply the exponential to all of this. I'm sort of skipping over a lot of the algebraic manipulation here, but I'm going to get this expression when I take the exponent and deal with all these logarithms using the rules and laws of logarithms. And then I solve this expression to try and find v. Again, I'm skipping over the algebra a fair bit. Isolate v in this, you'll get this expression. And then v is y over t, or y is t times v. So I multiply this times t to get this expression for y. So going fairly quickly through the separable part of this, I do, after the substitution, get a nice way of solving the original differential equation. This is the function y that solves it. The second substitution I want to talk about is something that looks a lot like a linear equation, but instead of having q on the right, it's going to have q times a power of the dependent variable, y to the n. These are called Bernoulli equations. They are named after one of the Bernoullis. Uh, the Bernoullis were a family in Basel in Switzerland over three or four generations. There were eight different Bernoullis that did work in mathematics. Really interesting piece of mathematical history. So this is named after one of the Bernoullis. The substitution that works here is you look at this power y to the n that's associated with this function q, and you substitute strangely v equals y to the 1 minus n. So this is, seems like an odd thing to do, but it is in fact going to work out. Why does this work out? Well, the derivative, if you differentiate this, is going to be a chain rule derivative. So the derivative dv dt is going to be the derivative of y to the 1 over n, which is going to be 1 over n, y to the 1 over n minus 1 times the derivative of the inside dy dt. So this is a chain rule derivative. I can simplify this a little bit. And this gives me something to use to replace dv dt. So my um, differential equation then will have the other terms in it as 1 minus n y to the n q to the y n minus p to the y, taking the p over to the right. Simplifying this down a bit, I get these expressions and sort of skipping a little bit quickly over the algebra, what this substitution does is it turns this Bernoulli equation into a linear equation. And the linear equation is going to have 1 minus n p as the first coefficient and 1 minus n q as the second coefficient. And after this, I just solve it as a linear equation. I do the integrating factor, I multiply by the integrating factor, and I can solve for v, and then I'll use v equals y to the 1 over n to get the original y back out of it. Again, that theory is a bit hard to see. Let's do some examples to see what this actually looks like. Here's a Bernoulli equation. I have the derivative. I have y with some coefficient, in this case, negative 1 over 2 times t. And I have q, which is negative e to the t, times some power of y. So the n in this Bernoulli equation, the, th the coefficient of q, is n equals 3. So the substitution is v equals y to the 1 minus n. So 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And this turns it into this linear equation. And again, you can go directly to this form. The new form is going to have a 1 minus np and a 1 minus nq, and otherwise a dv over dt and v. It's going to be this lovely form of a linear equation. You don't need to repeat the derivation steps of the previous slide. 1 minus n is negative 2, so I'll replace that with negative 2. p is negative 1 over 2t, so I'll put that here. Q is negative e to the t, as so I'll put that here. That simplifies a little bit nicely to give me 2e to the t. Um, 
Should be another negative here that I've missed, but the negatives cancel on the left as well to give me dv over dt plus v over t equals 2e to the t. That's now a linear equation, and this is in fact one of the examples I did in the last video. So I'm going to use the last video and go straight to the solution. This was the first example from the last video. This was the solution. And then I'll undo the substitution. v was y to the negative 2. So y to the negative 2 is going to be this. Well, getting rid of the negative 2 is going to be the same thing as taking something to the negative 1 half. And negative 1 half is in the denominator with the square root. So simplifying this y to the negative 2 is going to give me this weird expression. This particular function solves the Bernoulli equation by the substitution of turning it into a linear equation and solving it in the ordinary way of solving linear equations using integrating factors. Here's one more. This is again like the second example of a homogeneous equation, one where you might have to do a bit of work to recognize the form. I'm going to multiply this y in to get negative y plus ty to the 4. And if I take this negative y over to the left, here I can sort of recognize that, oh yeah, this does look like the Bernoulli form. So be aware that when you're using these substitutions, it's not always obvious. So I have y to the 4 here for the Bernoulli power. So n equals 4, so the substitution is going to be v equals y to the negative 3. Um, the function p from the original expression here is going to be negative 3, and the function q is going to be negative 3t in the form. So the form that this turns into, again, you go going directly to the new differential equation in v, is dv dt minus 3v equals negative 3t. p is negative 3, q is negative 3t. The integrating factor here is e to the integral p of t, so e to the integral negative 3, which is just e to the negative 3t. I multiply both sides by the integrating factor. That's how solving linear equations works. So on the right side, I just multiply by e to the 3t. And on the left side, multiplying with the integrating factor always turns this into a product of the integrating factor times the dependent variable v. So I get a product rule derivative on the left. I integrate to get rid of that derivative on the left. So I get an integral on the right. This is a integral by parts. Again, you don't necessarily need to show these steps, but I've shown the two steps of integration by parts here, and you get this result at the end. So this is where I get to after doing the integrating factor and integrating the right side of the equation. Then I need to get rid of the integrating factor, so I'm going to divide by e to the negative 3t. It's going to cancel off here. It's going to cancel off here. And divided by e to the negative 3t is the same thing as multiplying by e to the positive 3t. So I'm going to get that term here. And I can go to common denominator to make this a little bit nicer to work with. That's solving for v. Remember with Bernoulli, it changed the Bernoulli equation into a linear equation in the new function v and solved that function for v. But v was equal to y to the negative 3. That was the substitution. Now I have to undo the substitution. So to undo the substitution, um, I take the reciprocal and take the cube root. So this y to the negative 3 turns into this expression here. I forgot to do the reciprocal in these slides. I'm going a little bit quickly at the end here to get these videos posted. My apologies. Please flip this and actually make it. Oh, I did do the reciprocal. It is the reciprocal here. I did the reciprocal one step early. So this is correct. So my apologies for being a little bit um, a little bit inaccurate here, and there were a couple of errors earlier in the slides as well. That does cover the substitutions. This is the end of first order techniques. There's a lot to cover here. There's a lot of different ways to do things, a lot of practice, but I hope you get a sense of sort of the various different ways that we can approach first order equations. In the remainder of the course, we'll move on to second order and partial and systems equations. This will be all that we will do for strictly first order equations.